It was not the day that I went to the hospital that I got sick. It was way before. What I mean by this is that anorexia nervosa, a dreadful quandary that over 70 million people suffer from, is a developing illness. To basically understand my battle, you have to understand the obvious dichotomies in our life, like good and evil, savage and civilized, or closed and open that we know represent opposed things. But I did not know as a 12-year-old girl of the paradox that being physically light would make me mentally heavy. Most sufferers of anorexia hold one common trait. This trait pertains to dialectic of speech silence, silence that affects not only the individual, but also the surrounding people. Elective mutism doesn't do good any here because people disparage anorexics as if they should be able to be verbalized their problems in order to be acknowledged. When in fact, we cannot do that because we live in a state of isolation where we don't admit anything wrong. That's why we say, I'm fine, no thank you, or I'm okay. My personal experience is a testament to my conviction that anorexia shackles us until we recover. At the beginning of fifth grade, I was healthy both mentally and physically. But as the routine started settling in, peer pressure pushed me to think that losing several kilograms would make me feel, feel and look better. I thought doing so would distract me from home troubles, studies, and friends, which turned out to be a fact, but in an incorrect way. So explaining this, starting my recover, uh, starting, I started controlling the only thing I felt I could control in my life which was food. My illness was a golem um, controlling me on the back and whispering dangerous comments. Taming this golem blinded me from worrying about abusing my family, studies, and friends. But you see, I was both a blind and the deaf of rational thinking. So while recovering, struggling with anorexia was mostly about who gains authority, me or the golem. I tore food apart to eat the least of everything, refused to eat certain foods, and lied to my lover mom about the number shown on the scale. I exercised daily and watched diet videos. I was deaf of anyone's advice but the golems. And this is how anorexia consistently deceives us. It promises us to make us look pretty and give us control, but in fact, um, anorexia is the master. Like faces and fees of poverty, it feeds of our insecurities. Anorexia manipulates us to think that we're a team, when in fact, we're just slaves to it. Looking back at the winter of 2017, I was very sick, yet I lied to conceal the fact that something was amiss. My body forced me into the nurse's room every single day, but nobody recognized the problem. Until finally, on the very day I went to the hospital, everything changed and collapsed. I, while I was forcefully placed in the ICU diagnosed as anorexia, I reflected upon the previous three months of craziness but ended up with a candid refusal of admitting to be anorexic. Even though the doctor said that staying away from a troubled family will improve my health and help my recovery, my mom made an unilateral decision to stay away from intensive care because staying away from family for an indefinite period would rather worsen my illness. And my mom chose to speak openly about my illness like I'm doing right now, and I believe it's the best choice she has ever embraced for me, one I would never regret because it liberated me from being shut off from society and allowed me to reach help from others. I'm glad that I sought help, but I'm just, the, just one of the lucky minority. Many anorexics don't reach out because the golem dictates that you have to be in a devastating condition to have anorexia. This condition, interpreted by mental health professionals, is just being dead. Anorexists cannot understand that their action may lead them to death, thus they go for more and more extreme levels. That was me. I didn't want to gain weight, lose control, eat those more food and those calories. And even though I restricted my eating less, try not to count calories and acknowledge what I really need for my health, I didn't always succeed. I flushed my snacks down the toilet, poured my medicine down the drain, and kept exercising in the dark. However, challenging anorexia resulted in comfort in myself and the people around me. I had counselors, therapists, doctors, teachers, some friends, and my family always just there beside me supporting my recovery. Revealing my illness to them wasn't a shame for me at all. It rather built a strong support network, which allowed me to reach access from others. 
Without them, I know I would have relapsed over and over. During my recovery, I became aware of peer disturbances. Uh, one girl in my class didn't eat food during lunch after I went to the hospital. She always inspected me, not my face, but my body. Another girl told others that I was lying on a hospital bed like a coward while I was gone. Boys well, in every class were saying that I have an incurable disease like cancer. A small group of girls envied me for being skinny and wanted to have anorexia as well. These were the obstacles for my recovery, but with my counselor, I learned to jump over them and go on with my recovery. Today, the golem that used to be on my back is buried fastened under me. However, this doesn't mean that anorexia won't recur. Therefore, we should always be wary of past symptoms. Now that my life is healthier than ever, I enjoy consuming the fear foods without anxiety, uh, doing activities without any restrictions, and being socially active, and holding the privilege to share my story like I'm doing right now. Moving on, now that I've shared my knowledge procured from my own experience, let's tackle the misconceptions of anorexia. Anorexia disorder characterized by a strong desire to be thin and an extreme fear of gaining weight. According to the book Diet and Nutrition, these people, called anorexics, perceive their bodies as larger or fat, even though they're grossly underweight. However, if you use extra subtlety, you can know the rooted focus of this disorder. Anorexia is more about control. There are two controls anorexics go through. One is being controlled by the anorexia golem, and two is having control over recovery and your health. There are two totally different things, one passive and one active, but there are why um, anorexia occurs and how, they, how anorexics recover from the illness. But even after we recover, the sense of control may shift to another subject and develop into another issue. Another subtlety is that anorexia is a mental illness, not a physical one. Anorexia is an in internal and ineffable struggle. Anorexics go on severe diets, purge, hide food, and people think that the only result is um, being skinny and losing weight. And even admire how, how thin anorexics are. But in reality, the effects range from osteoporosis, which is having holes in your bones, to severe depression, which proves that it is a mental illness. Again, how does anorexia shackles us? Anorexia feels like nothing we ever do or say is ever good enough. Nobody wants to hear our voice and opinion, so our only option is to remain silent. The only way we can verbalize the struggle and share our experience is through bodies and eating habits. So who would listen? Silence slowly kills us and we don't know how to reach out. Otherwise, the only one who will listen will be the golem and we will turn, them, turn to them. As anorexia becomes our identity, why will we want to recover from anorexia? Why lose the label we get, our identity? We contemplate over this, but since we lack rationality, the stigma constant, um, consciously drives us back to the state where we refuse to recover over and over, which leads to relapsing. I'm aware that this topic is sensitive and unusual. For the majority of people, food is what they eat when they are hungry or whenever they want to. But for us, eating is complex. It is this guilt, guilty anguish, but, and you may think that we don't eat because we hate food. As a matter of fact, we love food too much that we're obsessed with the concept of it. We love food, but we dread it. We fear to gain weight and consume those calories, but we also fear that we will perpetuate in the cycle forever. I'm also aware that this topic is intricate. Like kids have a tendency of hiding things that they don't want to and that they're embarrassed about, we conceal our problems. We hate to show what uh, we did wrong and our mistakes because we want to be seen perfect. This will for perfection leads many of the anorexics to death without them uh, realize, realizing. By this time, I hope you apprehended how torturous anorexia is. But how is there such a massive group in our society that still thinks of anorexics based on the clitoris? This is why we need quality discussion. We can't simply accept the straightforward explanations, and social media, I believe, is the source where everything starts and ends. Media plays a vital role in influencing people's opinions and decisions. It has formed certain ideal bodies, which are continuously being flashed before our eyes. 
the magazines, newspaper, radios, uh, and of course the internet are full of images of slim and slender bodies and models, which are often presented as desirable bodies. The mania for celebrities uh, makes teenagers want physical features like theirs, and when they aren't recognized by others on social media, they inescap inescapably feel depressed and from dissatisfaction and self-hatred. We're dwelling in a society where we define most of ourselves upon our bodies. Girls especially are appalled with the concept of gaining weight due to the media's uh, continuous reminders of daily diet products or values in weight loss. It's time we start loving what we see in the mirror. It's time we uh, start embracing our flaws. It's time we forget what the media has to say because in the end, happiness is what's all left. And if I may leave one last note to anorexics, please do not run away from recovery. You won't realize how you're doing it, but once you do, uh, recovering back will be a very difficult um, task. Do not stay silent, please find help. Don't let anorexia uh, concur you even before you can truly smile. Free yourself from anorexia's grip and pursue your dreams. Thank you.